Hello, this is Malorian, and now this will be a 30-point game of my Epic Vale up against Viros. Alright, so here's a game where it's not only against a caster I've never played against before, it's one that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> uh, this kind of goes with a lot of these ones here for Retribution, where I've just never even seen them before. So, uh, luckily he told me he's more of a beat stick, and I love that. You know, that means that he probably doesn't have a lot of crazy spells. And otherwise, I'm really looking forward to playing this player because he's going for a pretty neat paint scheme that he's slowly working on. Uh, anyway, this mission here is the one where you're actually trying to control your own objective, which I thought was really crazy, and then you can use it to blast the zones. Uh, I'm using the same list as before, Carnivian, Scythian, uh, Nephilim Soldier, I got a Shepherd, Epic Veil, vale, of course, Anissa Rivel, and then I have my Raptors, and then... I'll just cover his so uh, side in the next picture. Now he has these Dawn Guard, he has a Mage Hunter, he has a Phoenix, uh, behind him is where that Viros is, then there's a Griffin, and then there is a Hydra, uh, behind the Maul is an Arcanist, and as you can see here, the cool thing that he's going for is Avengers. So he has his Griffin done up like Captain America, uh, his hyphen or hydra guy is all done up like iron man and i'm telling you i mean i can't wait to see this whole army when it's all done but uh anyway yeah i i really am looking forward to this match just to see what these guys can do and otherwise uh yeah just i i think i kind of the advantage here just because i think he kind of misdeployed uh he went first and whereas you need to hold your objective with your own caster his is even more here on the right so i don't know what sneakiness he has planned but i think i got the advantage here just because of the way he's deployed so really here uh since I deployed first and he deployed second, his Dawn Guard, which I want to make my prey target, because they're really the only thing I can be shooting at, is on the, the wrong side. So all my stuff I had to kind of shift over, uh, Epic Vel put on Oculation up on the Raptors so I can kind of survive the shooting battle, and I also have the uh, Refuge up on my Scythian. And otherwise, I'm just kind of moving up and trying to put up the pressure so that if he moves up, I can really try and counter. His turn one... Now, really, most of the stuff ran up, and I have to say I was also really happy that his one Viros is still staying on the wrong side. So I'm really hoping he, even though we went over the mission before, that he won't be going over there and I can start jumping ahead in points. But he actually declared a, a charge with the Griffin onto my Anissa Rival. Now, of course, this is a gross, you know, not possible charge. And he actually measured it and seemed like he was actually thinking he would be in. And what I think he's trying to do here is that he's trying to pull ahead in this whole... Uh, heavies versus uh, jacks war because it's two heavies versus one medium and if he thinks or tries to make me think it was a big mistake i'll try countering attack his guy uh, maybe not destroy him and then he can counter and try and take out my heavies whereas i just tried taking out one of his mediums so that's what i think he was really trying to do but i think i got a good plan to try and deal with it anyway Alright, so first of all, I have my Raptors and Anissa I go and pick off a whole bunch of his Dawn Guard on the left. Uh, of course, I upkeep the spells that I had, and I went and I put the Animus of the Nephilim Soldier onto my one uh, uh, Scythian there. The Scythian charges up, smashes the Griffin. Uh, he just turned it backwards because he doesn't have any Wreck Markers. Then I use that to trigger my Refuge, move back, uh, then I go and I switch up the spell on him so that now it's actually admonition. The Carnivian goes up, changes the animus so that now it has a spiky growth on it. And really what has happened here is he's just really given away his griffin. Because now if he comes after my Scythian, I am just going to back away. He can't really attack anything. And uh, big advantage here to Ever Everblight. So knowing that I have this going up, uh, my admonition, he really just sets up to shoot at me. So he kind of sets up a gun line and uh, shoots at my Scythian, does an okay amount of damage, uh, you know, maybe taking off one third of its uh, boxes or something, or maybe just a quarter, just in that little range where it's, it's a little bit of damage at least. And otherwise, no, he's kind of staying back. You can see there that Viros did pretty much just run over, so he was within four inches of his one objective there. But, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm just loving this, because pretty soon, soon I'm going to be shooting through all of his infantry over there, and I, I think I really have him in a really tough spot. 
So turn three then, first Anissa pops over, kills two of the Dong Guard, which opens up the shooting lanes for the Raptors. Uh, they go up and they throw some shots into Viros, taking off about half of his hit points, so that's pretty deadly. Uh, then this is going to be my feet turn. I went and, you know, pretty much shot my Scythian in the back, uh, did a whole bunch of the obliterations to his one uh, Hydra there. And then just the whole thing where I, I sent in the, the Scythian, it destroyed the Hydra, did a whole bunch of diff uh, damage to his uh, Phoenix there, and then otherwise I just had Admonition on it, I had the spiky growth, and then just in case I have my one uh, Carnivian there as well, also a spiky growth, ready, ready to counter anything after he kills those guys there. So his turn three, uh, first of all, I want to say this is where I was really kind of scared because this is where I kind of realized in my own mind that even though controlling your own objective seems pretty poor as far as a game design goes and it really encourages defensive uh, standpoints, it actually encourages being offensive because really what you want to do is to go and contest your opponent's objective. And so... Uh, what that meant is that even though we've been each scoring each time, kind of holding our own on the turns that it's possible, this turn, even though it looks pretty good on my side, my Carnivian wasn't far enough up. So if he could have ran somebody there to be within four inches, it'd be contested, and then he'd win. Uh, so that would have really sucked, but luckily he didn't. The Mage Hunter went and charged over at my Scythian. I triggered my Abonition, moved out of the way. Uh, then his Phoenix went destroyed my Scythian, uh, he moved up his Dong Guard so he could go shooting a bit at my Carnivian, but I don't think they did any damage whatsoever. And in my turn 4, I would have had several ways I could have actually killed this caster. Uh, he actually couldn't finish me off with his Phoenix, he actually had to come down with Viros to finish me off, so either my Carnivian could have killed Viros, or I could have just shot him. But I just decide to go over here, contest his objective, I get ahead in points, and boom, I win. So, victory to Epic Vale, and I think the big story of this one is just, again, the very huge power of her spells that aren't obliteration. I mean, sure, obliteration helped me to really bash up, bash up her, his uh, Hydra, but really, it's just this refuge and this admonition, which are just amazing spells. And then, of course, you have other ones, like this Oculation, which was great for keeping my Raptors alive. I mean, otherwise, he could be moving up, and his Dong Guard would have been shooting me up the whole time. So, uh, wow, you know... Epic, uh, or sorry, uh, regular, I wish it was epic, uh, Bethany, but uh, Bethany is still my favorite caster, but it's now starting to be very clear that, you know, it's starting to get close with this epic veil, so he's really cool, so uh, hope you guys like watching it, bye.